All right, so at this point, you should be familiar with the halfway full wave and bridge rectifier. As you can see on the screen, um, I have the bridge rectifier up there. I said in the notes that we are going to create uh, from the bridge rectifier <coughs> our power supply. Uh, if we ever make it back to school, that's what you're going to be using is the bridge rectifier. All right, I also have notes <coughs> that you should have looked through on uh, ripple and capacitance as they pertain to a power supply. But what we want to do right now is we want to start taking this rectifier and we want to start creating a DC signal. So the first thing that we have to do, we know that this right here, this signal, if we look at it, <clears throat> okay, is a full wave, uh, full waveform. So what we want to do is start taking this and kind of squash it down and create a DC signal. And that's going to happen in steps. The first step that we're going to do is we're going to add a capacitor. Now we know what capacitors do. I gave a review on the sheet that's uh, uh, posted on my website. We know that capacitors will charge and then discharge, charge and then discharge, and they'll do that at a certain rate. Well, we're going to show you, or I'm going to show you, what we can do. I'm not going to go through calculations or anything like that at this point. But if we add a capacitor and we put it in, in parallel with our load, what we will get <coughs> is this capacitor starting to charge and discharge at a different rate that our waveform is. So for example, I'm going to keep this a uh, couple things here. Normally we want an electrolytic capacitor here, but unfortunately there are no electrolytic capacitors over here. So we're just going to use this cap. We can make it work. You'll see what I mean. Um, but ideally we want electrolytic in there. We're going to keep it at one microfarad just simply because that um, um, we can see a difference. And I, that's, that's really what I want to show you. So <clears throat> if I do a split screen, you'll notice all of a sudden our waveform kind of shifted. Well, actually it didn't shift. It got kind of squatty. So right now, <clears throat> our waveform, it, it was from 0 to 10.5. Now it's 7.5 to 11.5. So we have what some people would say, well, that can be averaged out to a DC waveform. And you're right, it can be. But it's pretty unstable. It's pretty large. And as I mentioned in the notes, we really want um, our peak-to-peak -peak here, or our ripple, as this could, this could be considered ripple, we want it to be plus or minus a quarter of a volt. So the way we can do that, and I'm going to demonstrate it here, is if I take this value, and I'm going to up it by 10 all of a sudden that waveform is, is, where, is where we want it. It's about the 10.5 mark. It's, <clears throat> excuse me, on average still 1.4 volts below um, 11, which is, you know, that's because of the drop here. But I'm going to go up tenfold more. And now this is really what we want. We have a little bit of ripple here. You can see it. But we have what's almost a straight line DC waveform. Uh, the ripple is well within the guidelines that I had mentioned. Um, and ripple is, too much ripple is bad. A little bit of ripple is not bad. But ideally, at this point right here, we have created a, a power supply. If you wanted to hook up something from here to ground, you know, maybe it's a light bulb or um, even an LED, uh, you'd be sending approximately 10 point Oh, here it's 10.4, here it's 10.3. I mean, it, it fluctuates just a little bit. Now, let's, let's figure out why. <clears throat> the reason that does that is because if you look at each one of these points, each one of those points is really the top of our full waveform. So we'll just start here. It gets to this point, and then this capacitor, because we have a larger value, dissipates rather slowly or discharges slowly. So in reality, what this part of the circuit is trying to do is go back down, but the capacitor is keeping it up. Well, then all of a sudden, as we know, normally that full wave goes down and then comes back up and hits that peak again right there. And then the capacitor continues. It keeps it up here. It, when I say keeps it up there, what it's doing is it's discharging slowly. 
and then it hits the upside of that waveform again, and then it discharges and so on and so forth. And that's really what creates our ripple, and that's what we need to be careful of. Uh, in this instance, using a 100 microfarad capacitor, we could, like I just said, attach things right here and have a good halfway decent DC voltage source of about 10.4 volts. Okay, now that's all I want to talk about on Ripple. Uh, next video, we're going to put a couple components in here. There's going to be two more videos. One uh, will give us a direct DC uh, value at whatever really we want to specify, and the other one is going to be an adjustable waveform, I'm sorry, an adjustable DC source, which in reality is what you're going to build eventually if we get back.